I think the kind of way in which an organisation, you know, mobilises its workforce, particularly kind of as it starts to use that workforce to engage with its customers. I think, you know, content strategies become a much more important part of a reinforcement of those things. You know, one of my favourite businesses I had the good fortune to be part of was Finkel First Direct, which has a sort of amazing culture of customer service and that, you know, people understand what's the right thing to do and that, you know, they had some simple things which aren't really content, they're more around sort of what, what, what was in the place. And the thing that always was remarkable for me was there was this lovely thing where um, in the kind of route to the kind of um, bathrooms in the kind of call centre, which is this massive kind of aeroplane hangar in Leeds, there is a hopscotch pitch in the kind of, so you can do that thing, you know, hop, 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 you know, and, and people do it. And it actually changes how you feel when you walk back to your call centre thing and put your headset back on. And everyone likes the idea of it. And if someone took it away, it would mean a kind of, you know, and so the sort of ability to actually do some of that sort of stuff, I think is, is you know, really important in terms of what you do and what behaviours you encourage in terms of organisations and how you use content as part of that. Also, both employees are, are a significant part of your overall voice, aren't they? So they, you know, want to feel good culturally around their business and feel proud of their business because they will also be talking about that, that company on, on their social media feeds in some form. So whether it's, you know, talk about colleagues or what's happened at work. So I think all that needs to come together along with, obviously, different parts of the organisation, including, I think, now even corporate affairs, which used to be a really separate part of an organisation, but now needs to be very much in sync with the rest of the organisation around uh, what kind of content it's building. I think, you know, what they say is, you know, your employees are your most trusted source of information about your company, and sort of right, rightly so. Um, you know, they, they will not hold back on being quite honest and open, whether that's through social media or to their friends and their family. Um, down the pub or, or to um, hopefully not to clients but you know I think there's a piece of they're the most trusted uh, you know sort of group so therefore you've got to treat that res with respect and actually you know provide them equally with the content as well and if they feel it's applicable and they want to share it then that's great um, again it opens up as far as impacting new audiences as well for the um, for the company and benefits the employee as well. So I think I would add to that that I think the Thought leadership is a topic that comes up here quite a bit, and the idea that the world certainly has enough thought leaders, but not enough thought leadership, right? So if you could take the approach that uh, Belinda mentioned and think about those voices collectively, so collective thought leadership for the organization, instead of highlighting one individual all the time, I think that's sort of a mistake that people make. Uh, then you have the problem, what if that individual leaves? Uh, but then I say you have a, 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 you know, a void to fill for another person to step up. So, But I like to think more collective thought leadership and the other part about it, my friend Mark Schaefer was, uh, he wrote a book called Known, and I was uh, reading it over the weekend. And he talks about, can you really love a brand or do you love the people behind the brand, right? It's much easier to love the people that you engage with uh, rather than the brand. He gives an example of, of a hotel um, that he is, is loyal to, not because of the brand, but because of the person at the brand who helps him in his time of need. And I thought it was a really unique spin, like how do you elevate those voices within the organization, but also keep that balance of the voice and tone. Well, it's that thing around, you know, what you do versus what you say you do. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, that's actually a great point. One of the most successful pieces of content we did was built on purpose, our pur purpose of moving money for better. So I completely agree with your point that uh, if your content strategy doesn't li link back to your purpose and to a substance, then it's likely to be a bit, you know, blah. Um, and uh, what we found is obviously our core customers were big advocates of that. So we had lots of sharing rates and lots of uh, application to the contest that came with it. We were giving small amounts of money away for people to do acts of good in their community. But our agents, they were absolutely right front and center of actually sharing that content and promoting it with their customers. Um, and that connection between the agent and the customer as actually embodies the brand. And that's why we had a lot of people who were such advocates of the brand, even they didn't have direct contact with people from the company, but the, their agent and their, the, their frontline associate were the people that were embodying the brand and got great advocacy through those uh, communities. There are a ton of marketers right now who will say that influencer marketing is the biggest opportunity. And I would say that, that employee advocacy is your biggest opportunity. How many, uh, how did just 
you know, empower the advocates within your organization. They get higher click-through rates on, on the same content shared from a company versus an employer or a, an individual because they're more trusted. Uh, and there's just a huge opportunity. Why would they not want to help you amplify the content uh, unless they, number one, they don't know how, they're highly regulated, uh, or they simply have no way to quantify it and drive, drive the business back to, or drive the benefit back to them. I think one of the things though as well is is um, helping them understand as well how to do that if they wanted to. What's in it for because, me? Yes, that's, exactly. That's really good and there's certainly something in it for everybody. Yeah, and you know what we've done at EY as well is is run um, you know ambassador network sort of training. So if you want to share on social media and you want to share, here are the things that and the types of things that you can do, etc. So it makes people feel a bit more comfortable about that because it might be, actually you might have some employees, some are very, very, you know, active on um, all different types of social media, but some aren't, but want to be, but need to have a bit more of a support around actually, what does that mean? How am I going to, to grow my, my influences, etc. So I think there's a piece of, understanding your types of employees, who wants to engage and who doesn't, and providing the support when needed to do that. Because again, it goes back to individuals and individuals well, sharing different ways. Well, successful you know, campaigns, brand campaigns have always been around, you know, companies exposing their people um, and the people talking about their brands in advertising. Um, that always, I've seen, has done a lot for brand health. So I think there, it's a very powerful idea around employing or just encouraging your your constituents within your own company to be proud and to be able to tell their stories because then it is more authentic.